Thank you for joining us for the fifth episode of jQuery 1.4 Hotness. Uh, this uh, episode, we're going to be talking about some of the utility methods and other miscellaneous awesomeness that we now have to, to, to mess around with. So, one of the probably the coolest things that we have now is a new technique for element creation. So, if you take a look at this little snippet of code, we're going to pass in uh, a div. Like, or actually, we're not passing in a div. We're going to create a div. We're passing in a string of HTML. Create a div on the fly. But then the second uh, argument is an object. It's a, uh, basically an attribute object. So the ID is going to be set to foo. Now, and then these other two are actually pretty interesting. So I, I could say that the, uh, I guess, the rel tag would be set to something, right? So this is kind of using the, the attribute method, sort of. But then <coughs> these uh, CSS properties will be essentially internally set with the CSS method. And this click handler will be internally set with, you know, bind. Um, so here you can kind of create an element extremely easily with all your, your handlers, your styles, um, all in a single declaration. Very, very excited about this. Uh, a new method that we now have is the detach method. So detach is very similar to remove. But there's one thing about remove in that it removes all the event handlers from an object. So if you, uh, so from an element, if you remove an element and with the expectation of putting it back onto the DOM, it's going to come back to the DOM without any event handlers on it whatsoever. So detach is basically the, the alternative, which you take it off of the DOM with detach. So for instance, I have this table. I'm going to detach it, and then I'm going to manipulate it somehow, um, and then I'm going to return it back into the DOM and it's going to maintain all the event handlers that it had on it originally. <coughs> Speaking of data and events, um, there's a new way that, that data, the, the return value, when you call data without any arguments at all, uh, with, when you call it with you know, two arguments, it's a setter, usually one, it's a, get, uh, a getter. But here, so we're going we're gonna to take this element, we're going to say that uh, our big chief, his age is seven, he has an interest in lollipops and um, definitely ice cream. Does he like uh, Italian ice? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and um, then we're going to get the data. And previously in 1.3 um, and, and, and before, it would get this unique identifier that was used internally and also exposed for plugin developers if they wanted to get a, a unique you know, identifier for an element. Uh, but now it actually returns the object uh, the data object of everything that's in there. So I'm going to get back something that looks like this. Um, just an object uh, holding whatever it's storing. And I do want to point out that the data object on an element does contain the event handlers. So you'll, you'll get that as well. <sighs> and then we also have is plain object and is empty object. These are kind of two utilities. Uh, and I don't, they do exactly what they're called. Um, is plain object uh, basically text to make sure that it, you're not dealing with like a, a constructor, a class, um, a jQuery object. All those things will return false, um, but a standard nice object. Uh, so that guy is going to return that. Document body is going to fail, but if I did something like um, you know normal old object, that's going to be true. It's empty object. Uh, well, if it's an empty object, it'll be true. I don't know what else I can say about that. <coughs> Toggle class uh, has some new enhancements that are pretty rad. So let's say that we're starting off with a div that currently has a class of tumble. Okay. Now we're going to grab that div and call Toggle class on it, saying bounce and spin. So this is one of the first enhancements, which is Toggle class can take multiple uh, classes. So bounce and spin are brand new to that div. <coughs> Let me keep that so you can see it. And what we're going to end up with is a div with the class of tumble, bounce, and spin. Makes sense. <coughs> now, one of the cooler parts is that if I now toggle class on bounce and jump, bounce already exists, jump is new, it's going to remove bounce from your classes, add in jump. If I did toggle class bounce jump again, it would you know, add back in bounce, remove jump, 
Um, and of course, with all of these, for instance, if, if I say, uh, for the second argument, true, it basically forces essentially what would be add class, and false would essentially force remove class. So given this example, um, if it was tumble, bounce, spin, I did toggle class, bounce, jump, false, uh, we're just going to remove bounce, uh, and, oops, remove bounce, and spin stays on there. So that's kind of what we have now in toggle class. A lot, a lot more powerful, and I personally prefer to use toggle class versus um, uh, add class, remove class. I'll, I'll typically use it with some sort of uh, conditional guy up here and a ternary and that kind of thing. A lot of power in here. Index has a new API available. Let me first review what the old API is. Index is you want to get the um, index of where this element is relative to a uh, set. <coughs> and previously, um, what you do is you start out with the set. You say, given these LIs, I want to get the index of this element in particular, this LI current. And that's going to return you know, some number, like three or something. It's the fourth LI in there. <coughs> this is kind of, I consider it to be a little different than the standard API of get an element and do something with it. So what we have now in jQuery 1.4 is you hold on to the element that you're interested in, and you just call it index. And what the default behavior of this is, is it will get the index relative to its siblings, right? So if there's just five LIs um, in, the, in this block of LIs, and this is the fourth one, it'll return three. Um, also has a little bit more power. So let's say if you start off with this one element here, more info, and you're interested of where, which H3 this is relative to all the H3s in the document. So it doesn't have to be siblings, for instance. So, so here you can just kind of query everything. Um, this, will, this will work as well. Contains uh, was previously internal, and it's now available externally. And basically what it does is it checks to see um, the relation between two elements. So here we have the document element. The document element refers to the HTML tag, pretty much. Um, jQuery contains document element, document body, which basically says, does the document element, the HTML tag, contain the body? It does. Does the body contain the HTML tag? No. So that's how contains work. It's extremely fast. And then uh, noop, or as I prefer to call it, the noop method, um, is, uh, is a jQuery internal that is now available externally. And it's uh, basically an empty function. So I mean, it, it is, if it was defined right here, it would be this. And so obviously it doesn't do anything. Um, but its use case is something like this. If you're defining a plugin, that plugin's going to have a callback that's optional. Sometimes users are going to pass something in, sometimes they're not. So my plugin is going to do this awesome stuff. And then at the end of this animate function, either I want to call the callback that was passed in, or I don't. Um, in a lot of cases, perhaps you might do something a little bit differently where uh, you might you know, have to auto-execute something. Uh, and this is just a way to make sure that it will work um, if, if no function is passed in. So that's kind of the, the cool use case for NOAA. And I think that wraps it up. Uh, thank you for joining us. There's one more jQuery 1.4 hotness. So uh, hope you'll join us for that. Thank you.